he could have done in Afghanistan. Today in Kandahar, the Taliban proudly paraded about with the United States issued military gear, aka trophies handed to them by the Biden administration. And to make matters worse, as News Max correspondent Logan Raddick tweeted, the Taliban is sending American vehicles to Iran. Biden is right. Only he could have overseen this debacle. Well, joining us to break down the Taliban Iranian connection is the executive director for Iranian Americans for Liberty and Newsmax contributor Brian Lee. Brian, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, good to be back here. Thank you, Jen. Well, you wrote a great piece for Newsmax. Uh, on, you said, on peace through strength, Trump was more than right. Uh, you know, Biden's leadership or lack thereof seems to be a gift to the Taliban and to Iran. Yeah, unfortunately, Jen, it's really simple, and it pains me to say this. Biden lied. Americans died. He's been projecting weakness from day one in the Oval Office. And as he's been projecting this weakness onto the world, our adversaries like China, like Iran, like Russia, have been taking advantage of this. And the terrorists that uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran funds all throughout the world, from Hamas to Hezbollah to Le uh, in, in Lebanon, uh, they are licking their chops at how weak our president is. And unfortunately, now we're seeing Americans that are dead because of, again, weakness coming from this president. And, you know, Brian, I think that unfortunately Joe Biden did a couple of huge favors for Tehran and for the mullahs in Iran. Number one, because of his war on American energy, we have uh, oil prices, which are sky high all over the world. That's great news for Tehran. It's great news for Moscow. It's great news for a lot of places, but not for American consumers. But then secondly, of course, this issue of leaving all this material, this military material in Afghanistan, some of which, as you point out, is making its way now to Iran. Here's my simple question regarding that equipment. I do understand that some of it would have been difficult and very costly to get out of there, right? And a lot of it's very old because we've been there for 20 years. So it probably isn't worth the cost of airlifting and transporting all the way back to the United States. But why didn't we blow it up? Why didn't we just absolutely destroy all of it so it would be totally unusable to the Taliban, to Iran, to anybody? Steve, they never had a plan. Uh, there, there hasn't been a plan from day one. If there was a plan, they would have taken things like that into account. Uh, and as you just mentioned, unfortunately, as of a couple hours ago, I have learned uh, from some uh, of some reports uh, that U.S. Humvees and other U.S. Uh, military uh, vehicles, you're showing the picture right there, are mm -hmm. on their way to Iran. We had to have seen this coming. We had to have seen this coming. This is what terrorists do. Terrorists take advantage of weakness. And I know I sound like I'm a, a, a dead horse here saying the same thing again, but this president just continues to project weakness onto the world, and the world is laughing at us, and terrorists are taking advantage of us. Uh, and, you know, he needs to be held accountable. We have members of Congress in the House and in the Senate, uh, and I really do think it is time uh, for uh, these members to start holding this president accountable. Uh, Americans should not have died in Kabul. Americans should not have been left behind. They were left behind because President Biden has absolutely no idea what he's doing and something needs to change. Yeah. Brian, you're absolutely right. It's an embarrassment. It's a disgrace. I mean, what is it going to take to reestablish that position of strength that we held globally under the previous administration? Well, it, it's going to start with some words, uh, for, for sure. It'll start with the president and with his cabinet secretary starting to project some strength onto the world. And I'll give you a good example, Jen. Uh, one of uh, Secretary Blinken's first actions that he took as secretary of state was removing the Iranian-backed Houthi rebels from the State Department's foreign terrorist organization list. Since then, the Houthi rebels have been attacking our allies in the region for months. And what does Secretary Blinken do? He said, sends out a tweet. I think I counted earlier. He's tweeted now 15 times condemning the Houthi rebels. Secretary Blinken, if you're listening, stop condemning the Houthi rebels, put them back on the foreign terrorist organization list and treat them like the terrorists they are. I don't understand, Jen. We just keep coddling terrorists. Could you pretty please do this? Could you pretty please do that? It's a stark difference from the former president of this country. He knew it is peace through strength. That is what these terrorists understand. That is what these dictatorships understand understand. We've got to be strong with these people. If we don't, more and more situations are going to happen where Americans are dead, our allies are in harm's way. And I honestly, guys, with 9-11 coming up right now, I'm, I'm concerned with what's going to happen. I'm really concerned with yeah. what's going to happen. Mm -hmm.
Fortunately, I am too. Thank you so much, Brian Leiby, for joining us. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Steve.